So the first thing I wanted to know from Sam was how did he actually pick this house in particular and did he buy it through an auction or private sale? I saw auction, look it was funny enough, I actually didn't, I bought it sight unseen with my partner. I was in, based in Queensland and auction came up and we were sort of looking probably 12 months ago. Yeah. And looking for a bit of a project. Um, and this was a, sort of an old heritage home which was pretty much unlivable. Yep. Um, so at the time. So heritage listed. Yeah, heritage listed. So then obviously you had to go through the heritage overlay and all the process with council and all the rest of it, which was, you know, fun, yeah. fun, and fun and elongated and that type of thing. So I suppose the existing house probably finished about here and we've sort of put about 100 square metres on you yep. know, in, in living space and kitchen and stuff out the back here as well. So obviously played footy for a couple of years. And they might be getting another one here. Blues takes on the ball. Brilliant speed. He gets inside 50. <laughs> When did you start doing developments? Look, I did a little one in West Footscray a couple of years ago, oh, probably six or seven years ago. Yeah. Um, and that was just more just a cosmetic one, just to get that up to scratch, but then to sort of land bank it. So I did, and I had one in Ringwood East that we'd done a little bit of work to, yep. um, which I was living in, and then flicked that, and then sort of transferred those funds and with my partner into buying this. When looking at these sort of things, like there's a lot of research that probably goes into it, of what sold around and stuff like that. So buying this, we knew that one down at number 12 would sold for 1.4. Next door was a two bedroom that sold for about 1.2 in 2017. Yep. Um, and are these finished homes? Finished homes, yep. similar to sort of what we're trying, doing, to, do, trying yeah. to do and stuff like that. So we've got the sort of comparatives and, and you know, there's other streets and Gordon Street's a pretty good street. It's, it's had some really good sales over sort of 1.4 to 1.5. Yeah. We saw those high-end finishes, so we sort of look at those and go, not necessarily that we're going to get that, yep. but we're going, okay, well, the money's there at the top end yep. if you're prepared to do the work. If you stuff. do the right product, uh, yeah. yeah. The typical block size in the surrounding streets of this property is around 370 metres squared, which is what this property is. Sam has put in a gasolog fireplace in a living room, double glazed windows and a modern kitchen to try and keep the back half of the house as modern and contemporary as possible. Sam mentioned that getting the plans approved for the renovation took four months due to the heritage overlay that the property has, which basically stipulates that you have to keep the existing facade in its heritage character. Sam was able to get assistance from his sister who is an interior designer and mentioned that his partner has a good eye for finishes. From afar in Queensland. Oh, and else, yeah, yeah. while well, I'm doing everything else and all the rest of it. And you know, we had dynamic build, a good mate of mine, Rob Petrarca, who sort of oversaw the build for me. Um, and then obviously we sort of got all our friends who are plumbers, electricians and stuff like that to, to do a lot of the work for, you know. Yeah. engage them to do a lot of the work so that helps keep the costs down and using the mates and for whatnot. sure yeah. and that's the thing you know it's, you, you know everything costs at the end of the day but it's just trying to minimize where you can save a lot of people don't understand they go oh yeah we'll just do this but it's all the stuff once you rip everything apart is when you start finding things you start that, having a place yeah. yeah the structural condition of the property was pretty bad when they first bought the property essentially they had to rebuild the entire house However, they had to keep the existing features due to the heritage overlay. Yeah. You've gone extended ceiling height in here. Yeah, so it's about three metres yeah. here and it's probably about 2.8 in the existing. Coburg's not necessarily somewhere. I've spent a lot of time in my life and we sort of just found this one and thought, look, this looks like we can add some value to it and we'll see how we go. So you bought this one how long ago now? So we would have bought this literally coming on 12 months now, I reckon. So. Yeah. This is the 12 month mark, so probably four to four, you know, let's say four to five months in, in planning. Yep. Um, and then we sort of hooked into the build and demolition pretty quickly. So, and I think the thing is also like, you can find some pretty good things like on e like eBay and stuff like that that are actually pretty good quality, like just all the tapware and stuff like that. I mean, they still cost a couple hundred bucks, but it's not four or $500. So mm -hmm. you try and, Save where you can where and you keep can. the quality up as well. Yeah. yeah, and look, you still put the stone bench tops in and you do the right things with all the rest of it. Yeah. Um, that's probably where you see the return as, as you as you know from, yeah. from being in the game a little bit as well. Sam mentioned that he's already land banked his next project in West Footscray, which he's held on to for a while while gaining some capital growth. Now he feels it's at the point where it's time to build two units on that property as soon as this project is finalized. 
So you, realistically, you've got flooring, you've got your electrician who... Yeah, so electrician Sparky will fit off today. Uh, we'll have carpet next week. Well, it's just sort of, we've managed to pick up, and th these are just little things with these sort of period homes. We've sort of tried to run the Art Deco skirts and the, and the cornices in this yep. section, and then it's all sort of square set in the back half of the, of the Which house. Which just modernises yeah. it a little bit towards the back end. Yeah, and then it's just like little things like these fireplaces and stuff like that. You know, yep. We found them in, at a, from an old house in East Melbourne and put them in here and it sort of gives it a bit more of that sort of character yep. and you go, go from there. Sam mentioned at the time when he bought the property, he felt that he had paid more than he should have when buying for 870,000. However, looking back at how prices have gone now, he actually feels that that was about right for the time. And are you planning on an auction once um, it's all done? Or what yeah, you... look, I think we will. Look, we'll probably look probably Feb, March next year. I think the market's doing okay at the moment. Mm -hmm. I think considering when we paid, bought this last year, um, you know, when would, would that be an end of November? We wanted to sort of get in before Christmas, just before COVID hit. There's a bit of a mad rush for everyone to get in and buy prior it's to. Impressive, you've actually got it done. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Everything that's been going on. For sure, and I think when, when we had the, you know, the five trades and all the rest of it, we sort of were able to manage that well, in a way. Um, and this is probably where we've got to. So if I were like, I sort of, you do your Gantt chart of where you want everything to thing, we're probably, three weeks behind. I think there's things like the, the crossover, you know, we've, we've gone to cancel to put that in to, to add the extra car space. And mm -hmm. um, it's all those little things that make a big difference, I think. So yep. something that just has off street parking, we're also gonna have the ability for parking out the back as well. Yeah. So sort of end up with that two car spot as opposed to, you know, one or none. One, one or none. Look, we're obviously, we're gonna put a roller door over in the corner there, yep. fence that off. Um, and then have some sort of steppers and some grass out there. So it's going to be pretty minim minimal. Um, yeah. And so it's got that effect of um, not a great deal of, you know, maintenance, I suppose. Mm. And I think that's the thing when, when, you, when, when we've looked at people buying in Coburg, it hasn't been necessarily for the, for the land size. It's, you know, it's probably a professional couple that's probably going to look to buy this. Um, maybe one or two young kids. So. Yeah. They're currently looking to pick up another project in addition to the other property that they already have land banked and can't find any blocks selling below $1 million in the surrounding areas, which shows the growth even through the COVID period. You bought this a year ago, you yep. held onto it for 12 months, and then all of a sudden you're going to, um, you know, then you've got another one that you've got land banked. What's the difference in, you know, I suppose from a profit margin perspective, is yep. it much easier when you've held it for a little bit yeah, longer? Yeah, definitely. I think, I think if you can hold things historically, you know, with the Melbourne market, that's sort of, you know, if, what, what is it, the rule of thumb, every 10 years, everything Doubles. should double. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it, do, it does make it easy because it, you know, that just widens your, your your margins with that type of thing. So. And then how do you go, so let's say you're, you're looking at this block 12 months ago, yeah. you go, okay, it needs everything done. How do you go about working out your budgeting? Because it's kind of hard to tell, you, you mentioned For sure. you've done repointing, you've Oh, definitely. We've under, underpinned, you know, the concrete slab, you know, it's rear, you know, how do you get the access in for the, you know, for the concrete in, all the rest of it. So, look, as I said, there's a lot of time and effort, there's a lot of spreadsheets, there's a lot of, okay, you know, a lot of the fixtures and fittings in this particular house are relatively high end mm -hmm. um, to, to tie in with the market that we think we're going to target at the end. Um, and again, look, okay, but I suppose going back to your question, I suppose whatever you're budgeting, sort of add, you know, 10%. Yep. The total renovation costs have been somewhere between 250,000 and 300,000. That concludes our inspection of the property. I'd like to thank Sam for showing us through his development project and we'll look forward to coming back on auction day to see how they actually go and uh, what the end result is. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more, then consider subscribing as always and I will see you guys on the next one.